What's up? Good morning. Live here again, coming at you. Finger guns. That's my favorite dance move. Um, I am going to design a house today in this live session. If you haven't been following along, thanks for being here. And if you have, this is going to be a repeat, but designing a house um, in this live sec session, working on getting um, roughly 10 floor plans to put on a potential parcel then we can build vacation cabins on as like a Verbo or Airbnb. We is me and some buddies have been dreaming about this idea. I'm creating floor plans now to put together a packet that we can take to investors or other people, um, get a group excited about it that we can put some funds together. So I'm using my skills to try and get something in the future. If something comes of this, I will share all of this on um, my socials and here on YouTube. Um, if you're watching on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitch, Hello as well. Thanks for being here. All right, so what am I going to draw today? Great question. Um, I am going to draw a mid-journey inspired cabin. So I've, I've had a lot of fun playing with mid-journey, trying, um, trying to get homes that I think would be designable you know sometimes mid journey spits out some really weird stuff but um a lot of this stuff usually is, is pretty close to reality um and then playing with it a lot to get to homes in the size range and style range i'm thinking for this parcel so came across this one after a series of prompts really liked it and um i'm gonna shoot for this and just explain my process as i'm going into this how you would design a floor plan to match a home like that um and then my process so i usually start with the schematic so room blocking in autocad laying out boxes um and squares rectangles to get a form a shape and once i've got a shape start thinking about the exterior concepts how's that all gonna play together nicely as we're putting a roof on the structure and actually thinking about it in 3d and then toward the end of the live, I will go into the 3D model and actually build this in SketchUp um, and then render it in Enscape. So you can see a pretty picture, um, hopefully close to our mid-journey image here. Uh, a couple more parameters just for this series. Um, we're assuming the site we get will have large acreage site. We're looking for 10 to 20 acres. Again, this is totally hypothetical. Like we are at like a 30% of like, we would do this if things align, like we're not actually putting offers in on properties or anything yet, but I wanted to do the legwork now so that we have something if it gets more serious. Um, and then PUD, I'm just planning on being able to put the homes wherever we want on the site. So I'm not constraining myself to specific footprints or sizing. Like I'm just feeling free to have some fun with that. And then I'm going to try and design 10 different cabin plans here. Um, if you haven't been following along, go back and look at my past lives. Um, that's where I designed some of them. Um, for today's specific cabin, as you saw, the mid-journey exterior, I, I think that's going to dictate a two-story great room. Um, let's go back to that image really quick. Um, you can see here this front wall um, just looks like it's all completely open. It even looks like there's a fireplace box in there, which, which we can draw. Um, but yeah, it looks like a two-story great room within kitchen and, and some area behind there. Um, so that's what we'll be playing with. And then, um, I'm going to try for three bedrooms, two and a half baths. Just, this is what most of the cabins end up being in this range for us. Um, no garage. I'm not doing any garages on these and having fun. I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun watching. All right, let's start with, um, Blue beam, actually. So I'm going to take this mid journey image. I wanted to talk about a couple things here um, that I want to think through in the design process. So this balcony stuck out to me. It's one of those things where, especially if there's a two story great room, there's no way there's, it gets really tricky to cantilever back any sort of conventional joist from this deck into the structure um and have it be supported like i said by anything conventionally so you're looking at like a really complex specifically engineered steel structure system well these cabins i want to be well under a million when we're constructing these um and this image is looking like 
multi-million dollar budget here. So I'm gonna do a couple things to get it more affordable. Um, first off, we're gonna take out this balcony over here. We don't really need that. Um, there's nothing to cantilever over there anyway. Second, I think it's gonna need a column to support that balcony from the roof up to here. And then um, I'm guessing actually the second floor will sit back here some. So let's color that in. So some second floor area in there. So this balcony space will just be that. Um, the second floor will come down here to the first floor, come through. Obviously the tree won't be there. Um, so those are some things I'm gonna do to try and just make this a little bit more affordable for, from a build standpoint, a little bit more um, realistic if we were to build this um, in our cabin parcel. One other thing I wanted to show is like, so for these flat roof systems, typically the only way um, to do the larger spans on these um, is to do a, uh, like a truss on it. Like, um, yeah, it's possible to get TJIs or two buys to work at times, but this span is gonna be over 20 feet. So I think I'm gonna need some sort of truss in here. So I wanna make sure this distance right? That little black line I just drew, um, is deep enough for a conventional truss to sit in there. Like I'm thinking at least 24 inches, um, if not more. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to get too tight with that area because then it, it'll be near impossible to frame and or build. Um, and then I might actually show slightly more of a header up here above these windows. I know the windows right on the roof line is a very, very cool look, but it's one of those things where it can make construction pretty, um, pretty tricky um, as, as we're going through. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and limit it a couple of those things to yeah, keep it in normal parameters. Okay, let's switch back over to AutoCAD now and we can start drawing the plan. So these are the plans I've been working on. Oh, there's red shoulder. So I have seven of them now for this cabin series. And I want to start drawing the eighth. Okay. For my process for a building like this, if you can recall, it was a large square shape roughly. And I'm just going to start with, um, 20 feet on this outside wall. Um, which will, if we do two by six walls, which will lend us to 19 foot inside to inside for that great room. Okay. The great room was the predominant part of that image. Um, so I think I need to start with there from a design perspective and then moving to the side. I know I want that great room to be a good size, good feeling size. Um, so I'm going to show 19 by 16 for the great room, throw some dimensions in on there so you can see it 19 by 16. Okay. Now I recall there was a bump out area and I want to bump that out six feet because that is going to be the same width as my balcony above. So if I bump that out six feet and this is all balcony area or patio area, um, that's enough for a couple chairs, some space to hang out. It's not, it's not going to be enough if you want to do a table. Um, so something to consider. Um, if you're looking at that there, oh, I'm going to share my keyboard too. Whoop. Hi. Um, it's not enough for a table. Um, if you're wanting four people to sit out there, like six feet is a little tight for that, but a couple of tables, uh, sorry, a couple of chairs, small, like end table or like, um, just some place to put coffee in the morning, I think is big enough. Um, I think that patio area is big enough for that. Okay. And then that allows me to put the kitchen here and then the dining here. Okay. Let's zoom in dining here, kitchen here, and then we can do bedrooms on this side, like back over here and then back over here or something with stairs up. So I also want those stairs to be closer to the two story area. Maybe the loft is right above the kitchen dining. Um, let's play with that. So I'm going to bump back 
kitchen cabinetry space. I, wait, before I do that, let's take this, make it a dash line to show. Like that'll probably be where the ceiling transition changes, okay? So this is all two story. This is our fireplace, like limestone, stone looking fireplace that we saw in the image there. This is kippin, ki kippin, kitchen cabinetry. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna come in 48 inches to start the corner of my island. And then if this island is four feet deep, does that leave us enough space for dining? So dining would be 11 three wide. Um, not huge, not tiny. That's kind of in the middle. See here, we finish out the kitchen. Okay, I'm processing a couple things now as I'm drawing this. And if you're trying to draw a floor plan, you should be processing these things as well. So this sitting area for our balcony, six feet, is not deep enough that if we put the kitchen cabinetry here, there's any effective space back here. So this, this is basically dead space because it's only, how wide is that? It is only three foot five and a half wide. That's a hallway. So there's not enough room to put shelving on that side, make it a pantry or anything. So I either need to go bigger or smaller with that space. So I've already reached an inflection point on my de design. So I might try two different things where one of them is smaller. I just bring that in four feet. Oh, let's go actually four more inches so that cabinetry has a place to end. And then bump this out another six feet. So that is roughly eight feet now. And then this would turn the corner here. Okay, sorry, my thoughts are ahead of my narration here. Give me one second. Okay, so let's say we got column there, column here. So now this is all outside patio area. This, we can put a window above our sink now and we can use this area for our pantry space. So we're still close to that mid journey image. Um, we've wrecked a couple things with it, um, but not, not a ton yet. Um, let me pop that back up for you. Oh. So this concrete area, you know, as you're looking behind that table and chairs, the concrete area, it's kind of behind the tree. That's where the kitchen sink window would be. Um, so I think, I think we're still pretty close to being in the framework for that. So I'm going to run with it. Um, the other thing I was going to try at my inflection point here was to just make this whole thing two feet deeper and then show all this as pantry, which could be cool, but then you need to put the sink in the island. I like this a little bit better because it gives us some more flexibility. We can put second floor above here too. Um, so I'm liking this route. Let's close this block off. Let's see here. Are all these dimensions nice and clean? Not at all. Um, I don't know why this came out to 16 foot four and some really random amount of 16ths, but it did. So I'm going to clean that up. And then this is coming in 12 feet. feet for that corner and that'll be the corner of our pantry area okay and that pantry area can get bigger this wall doesn't need to be set in stone yet um, in this kitchen area we can play around with it too um, I'm almost tempted to make this a couple feet wider for two reasons one if this whole bank is like fireplace and built-ins the living like real feel area of that great room is now 17 by 16, um, which is a little tighter than I had hoped. So stretch it out a couple feet. So now we have 22 feet on this front wall. 
a um, little bit more, a little bit more livable with that. Um, and then that gives us 13 feet to the edge of the island here, um, which I like more. So probably range on this wall and then fridge on this wall as well. Okay, now we need to build the floor plan in. Um, because I'm doing all flat roofs, as we remember from that mid-journey image, um, I can play with a couple things. Like I can put just a big rectangular structural area off to the side at one of these um, and then have it really the flat roofs will die into those spaces, right? So um, maybe this is our foyer. Let's see here. Kind of like that space. Hmm. All right, let's, okay. So to sum up, I had a bunch of thoughts going through my head and I'm gonna pause and explain them all to you. Um, okay, so at this stage, I'm thinking through a handful of things. One, where to put the stairs. And then two, I really wanna start thinking about how to lay out the second floor along with the first floor. Um, so I definitely want some sort of loft area here. I think this space is big enough for both a loft and a bedroom if we wanted to. We could do bedroom here. Um, and then stairs either coming in here or here. So feeding into that loft area. But then I also need to think about, like it's such a domino effect, right? So in design, I also need to think about that front door. Um, where and how do we get into the home? Because I'm, I'm really, this is kind of rare for me. I'm designing from the back front. Like that mid journey image is, is really the back of the house, right? Um, that's the area that's going to get the cool view and the great room and the main, the outdoor living and all that stuff. So, um, I usually don't start with the back of the house and work forward. I usually start forward and work back, but it's fine. Um, so I imagine from a vacation property standpoint, if the view is out this way, that means parking will be over here. So I want an entryway either on this side. This is gonna be a pretty dead for windows. So I imagine that won't be a view. Like we might have to like turn or rotate this like or mirror the home so that this side is getting the view. Um, so I could do that as an entry or that. And then the other would be bed, bath, bed, bath and beyond. <laughs> I almost said that. <laughs> well, I did say it. There we go. Bed, bath, and beyond. Um, cool. You're welcome. Um, okay. Got distracted by the island there for a second. Squirrel. Okay. Let's see how wide this space is. I can go eight feet with it. Go 48 with that as well. So that line comes into here. Oh, that's monstrous. I can even pull this back again. Because I don't want that walkway to feel tight through there. That's why I pulled that back. Okay. Um, I do think I like the idea of this being the foyer. For starters, let's start there. See where that gets us. So, switch back staircase there. Okay, so now I will go to I have a room layout guide, which I use often for a lot of my standard layouts, stuff that like I know I'm putting in plans all the time. So I know that the like walkways and spacing works. Um, just need to change a couple things on it. I usually take the dimensions off because the dimensions were formulated for the PDF, but I don't need them in AutoCAD just yet. Oh, I didn't grab that line, that's why. All right, now I'm gonna delete that wall hatching. Okay, so I know this is enough stairs to get up to a nine foot ceiling with some joist space. So I'm going to turn them, flip it, 
and put them flush with this wall. But then I also wanna make sure that there's enough walkway um, between that wall and these stairs. So I showed six feet just then. There'll be a closet under these stairs. Um, six feet is good for, like that's way more than a typical hallway. Like typical hallways I'm showing between three and a half and four feet. Um, but this is a main, main traffic area. This is gonna contribute to the feel and space of your foyer. So I don't wanna be chintzy with that. Um, and then I wanna make sure our exterior dimensions work. So I'm gonna come in 17 feet and then bump that wall in six inches. So the stair that stairway walkway is just under six feet now, which is fine. And then I'm gonna come in 12 feet with this wall. Okay, so as I'm drawing this, what I could do is just save the square footage and pull this wall in, but I don't wanna do that because I think I can get a little office space in here. I love talking little office space. It's like my new favorite obsession to tuck um, office spaces in pretty much everywhere I can. Um, okay, let's see here. So that's like an eight by eight office. It's actually pretty good size for a small vacation cabin. Then you got a little bit of open rail. Um, maybe that's all open as well. There's a catwalk. No, I don't want the open and open. That can be single story because then this will all be open. Um, I don't know. We can play with it. I'm going to show six feet for our front porch. I probably won't model that part in SketchUp. Um, I just want it there to have it. And remember, okay, now I need to come in and work on our primary suite. So it's going to be one wall coming all the way through here. Sweet. That is the right dimension. It's always exciting when that works out, when they're in plane. Okay, one wall coming all the way through here. We'll have a big opening to the foyer. Uh, the dining to foyer area, right? This will be a big opening. And then this can be more private. So, um... Let's see. Yeah, your primary is still getting cool views out of the back as well. Um, okay, if I make this all 14 feet wide, is that bump out? I know that's enough, like from my room layout guide and experience and all that. Um, I know that's enough to adequately fit a bedroom. And then that backspace there um, could be primary bath, powder, laundry, and mechanicals, maybe. It's asking a lot. We're gonna see though if it works. Okay, so for this bat, uh, bedroom, I am 13.8 by 16 feet so far okay so that's adequate size for a uh, king bed I can grab a king bed for you and show that so that's my king bed template okay so then if I need powder room I could always cut the powder room out of this space too so um, as I'm designing, I'm trying to keep things like that in the back of my mind, like give myself outs almost. Um, if like one idea doesn't work, what are others that do? So that's powder. And then this. Could all be mechanicals. Mm. 
laundry mechanicals. Well then, bathroom and walk-in closet is getting small for that area. Let me think about this, okay? And a coffee break. Stay hydrated, everybody. Okay. One option we have is to just slide this wall down four feet. Let's see here. If we do a big shower on one wall and cabinetry on the other, that give us enough space in there. Yeah, it does. So that shower, I moved it over. It's 42 inches deep. Um, you can go like eight feet with it. So if this were a single family residence, what I would probably do is do a six, six foot shower or like a five foot shower and do the toilet here, shower here, um, vanity space there, and a nice big closet there. But because this is a vacation rental cabin, I don't know that I need to go so big with the closet. So do I just cheat a little bit, make it slightly smaller? that bath space now and I could cheat this wall out forward more if I wanted um, this is where you really need to start playing with the details to match um, your clients wishes I could bring this out so this is four feet I could bring that back a couple inches too so that's three foot eight now okay so we have Laundry, let me grab some text and I can label this for future reference. Laundry slash mech. We got our powder. We got walk in. And we got bath. Uh, office okay also at this stage I like to you really have to be juggling a lot of things often when you're designing right so it can't just be the layout that works but the mechanicals and structure and everything so bearing wall through here I like that that's clean and consistent bearing wall through here I like that um, this block will all have a roof and then this block will all have a roof I imagine those two roofs will be different heights um, because I do want to play with that some. Um, what I could do is just do roof over this. Like this is two-story area. And then this is two-story area. So then we could do like a 10 or 12 foot ceiling over the primary bedroom. Um, and yeah, will that be our divider? But also I need to think, okay, so I, I shoved the mechanicals in the corner. Um, which the field hates, let's be real, because it's annoying, right? So um, this needs to feed the whole house all the way to the side. This is probably gonna be a slab on grade with no basement. Um, so that means that trunk lines are probably coming through here and then coming through here to feed into these spaces, this space, and that space upstairs um it's not the end of the world but i'm either going to need to show floor trusses or drop ceiling um if you show 10 foot ceilings dropping all this to like nine um so that they have room to work under the joist is helpful um so yeah i don't want to get too in the weeds with that but i feel like i have a a decent idea decent ish idea for that so I'm gonna keep moving um, I could put the furnace here too although it's gonna work better like from a layout standpoint it's gonna be better there or it could be in a closet here mm, no that's gonna take up too much space I could flip-flop this 
the, getting the stairs out of the way helps a lot, actually, um, because you can't run any mechanicals through that stair chase. So they have to run trunk lines around and stuff. Um, I mean, still, they're probably going to run the main trunk there. So, like I said, I'm not going to get too bent out of shape about it. But just playing with it some. I think I can make this slightly smaller. Because this will all be open to the dining. Dining. Let's do a foot. Um, and you're thinking like, oh, why would you make it smaller at this stage? It's always easier to smart start smaller. Smart smaller. Um, start smaller and go bigger um, than it is to start bigger and go smaller. And so, especially if you have a client on the other end, that's every client has a budget, every single one. Bill Gates had a budget when he built. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, it's always easier to start smaller, especially with the client on the other end, because then you can say like, they're inevitably gonna ask for some spaces to be bigger. And then you have the room and flexibility in that back card in your pocket and you're not fighting against them the whole time. Say so like, oh, you know, we are, we really are probably up against your square footage limit here. Um, this might <laughs> suck when you get the bids back. <laughs> Um, you know, you don't want to be there, so. And plus, like, if there is a client and you can get their goals accomplished in, you know, 1,300 square feet instead of 1,400 or whatever the number ends up being, like, that's a huge win. Okay, so nice and open to the foyer as you're turning that corner of an opening here as well. Let's start on the second floor now. So usually I just copy big chunks of area up and then this will all be open to below so this can now be a solid wall kitchen is gone oh that line was off that wall will be there okay stairs are really the only thing that's sitting in the same spot right Okay, then from a form perspective, I wanna try this like I was talking earlier. So the nothing over that primary suite, we can play with the ceiling height on that. And then we could do, okay. Also, yeah, I do want to build out over this side patio here with our room. Do two bedrooms up there. Two beds and a loft. Oh, this is going to be a big bedroom. Interesting. We got a lot of space because this inside to inside, 19 feet. That's almost big enough for two bedrooms which makes me think maybe we need to do plumbing or something there. Coming out 13 feet with it, just for a good size bedroom. So this is bathroom, this is bedroom. Um, I guess these lines don't need to be there. If I'm doing roof trusses, like I mentioned earlier, if I'm doing roof trusses, I don't really need to concern myself at all with any interior bearing. These are short enough spans where 30 foot four is outside to outside for that span. Um, and then these are looking like 16 six. Yeah, that's nothing for um, roof trusses. I mean, they can go much more than that and be plenty fine. Coffee break. Okay. Um, quick back to the mid journey. So you're seeing, um, this block here is probably what we're looking at, right? So these big window sets here, this porch there, um, another bedroom there, and then probably carve another room out of there too. Okay. So this is, brings up a good design point. 
So with the stairs here, let's see here, I have 13, eight by 15, one for a bedroom in this corner. That's plenty. We're good there. Um, a nice big closet. You can fit a queen or king in there just fine. With this room, I'm at eight foot nine by 15, eight. So that's so close. And because this office is hanging here, that's so close to being a livable bedroom size. Like if it just brought this out 18 inches, just this wall, 18 inches and this 18 inches, and then bring this out, all this out 18 inches. We now have 10, three by 15, eight. So that's big enough now to really call that space a bedroom and feel good about it from like a, a marketing perspective and a real estate perspective, right? So I, that's why you shrink square footage earlier because things like this come up later. Where it's like, oh, if we just added 50 square feet, we get a whole nother bedroom out of this and the office is more livable. There's more space in the foyer. Um, you have more room for your foyer bench here. You know, there's a bunch of stuff that helps. So um, making decisions like this a lot when you're designing plans um, and divvying up spaces. Okay, let's see here. This could come all the way out to here. This could be our loft. Actually, no, I like the big loft there. Because then we have, this is full four bedrooms. We have bedroom, 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 and then a giant game loft. And if this is my rental cabin, this is the board game loft. We're putting a giant table in there, ton of lighting, built-in shelves for board games. I got, you can see in the background, I'll show you. Tangent, tangent warning. Okay, so in the background here, there's Beast, the board game. I got that yesterday, which I'm so pumped to play. Okay, tangent over. Um, so I think I think this all works. I'm close enough now. I'm confident this is enough for bathroom. 13 by six. Um, that's plenty. That's almost big enough for Jack and Jill bathroom. All these bedrooms are big enough to carve closets out of. 13 by 12, eight for that one. We got 10, three by 15, eight for that one. And then we got 13, eight by 15, six for that one. I could even bring this out, you know, another six feet or so, like set it on this wall ooh, 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 and make this a secondary suite. Oh yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're pot committed now. Go big or go home. Okay. Yeah, do a secondary bath up there. So bath here, shared bath here. These two bedrooms, big loft. All right, let's check square footage. Actually, don't think this is crazy. It's our biggest one for sure. Um, but it's not like the world's biggest monster home. We are looking like 1785 on the main. Which again is is big, but I certainly designed bigger. And then upstairs while we're jamming to some tunes. Uh, for area calculation, I'm doing outside of exterior wall. I'm showing two by six walls right now. 1265, so just under 3,000 square feet. Again, big, but for what you get, it's not crazy. You got a Really big kitchen area. You got huge dining area. Nice great room. Um, four beds. Uh, I would say for a 3,000 square foot house, the primary bath is a little bit undersized. Um, and that office laundry mech area. Maybe powder comes over here. Um, it is nice to have the office though in the square footage, but yeah, if that powder comes over here that really opens things up for us because then we can make the walk-in a lot bigger. So let's see here. This just comes in a foot more. Oops. You got to move the items. 
the right angle so it won't work for you. Also for this span, 19 feet. So I still can do TJIs on this or floor trusses depending on, but everything running front to back through there and then carrying it all with a big beam there. So that office certainly got smaller. At the end of the world though, that's five foot two. What if we did, it's like a 60 by 60 powder. If that's the powder, hmm. What if the powder is on the side of the foyer? better because then I can bring this back three feet yeah that is again the small side for the office but this frees this up a lot because then I can do laundry mech over here oh yeah here we go that can be walk-in and then all that can be bath oh dang okay yeah. Now we're back on track for like a 3,000 square foot house. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Um, bathroom situation, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. Maybe even make that closet a little bigger. You can do an enclosed toilet space there. You will need room to get into that closet though. So, but still you got enough room for laundry mech there because your laundry mech room is now 610 by 1110. Yeah, 1011, sorry, excuse me. And then 66 by 1011. Mm, the only thing I don't like is this corner here. It's really cut off some of the floor plan. I mean, yeah, I could bring that wall out a little bit more too. Hmm. Could just make all that powder. It's a really big powder with a linen closet. Although the office is really tiny then. Four foot 11 for the office, yeah. Four foot on those stairs. We could shrink them each by four inches. What does that get us? If it's a completely open staircase, you can have open rail going all the way up, right? That office then gets a little bigger. Five, seven by seven, eight. I mean, that is big enough to Show a cute little built-in desk. Mm, yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep that. All right, um, I think we got a good spot where we can start to model this in SketchUp. Um, 45 minutes in, now we're gonna start to see how this looks in comparison to our mid-journey image, okay? Um, so, let's go over to SketchUp. and upload a couple of things. How's everybody doing today? Today is Friday for yours truly. Um, super pumped that it's Friday. Having a good day so far. It's been a fun one. So I am just copying a couple homes for our template file. Let's share some SketchUp. Okay, there's a little tiny SketchUp screen. I'll leave that mid-journey image in the bottom as well for you. And take a coffee break. 15 minutes for a render. Think we can do it? 
we can try. Okay, first off, I need the footprint. Uh, this is kind of a tricky footprint, so I'm gonna go into CAD and just copy the outline over and then import it into SketchUp. I think that'll be easier than trying to redraw it in SketchUp. Right? Savvy? Um, and what I do for this, I usually just delete all the lines except for exactly what I need, which is just the, the line work of the exterior footprint. Um, and then I'll import it into SketchUp. Give me one second here. If I was a fancy editor, I'd do some cool overlays right now. Like, check it out. Subscribe to my Patreon. Smash that like button. I mean, you can like it. You should like it, that'll help. If you want more people to see stuff like this, and for me to do more of these, smash the like button. I don't have a Patreon though, that was a joke. Okay, now let's import. Okay, we got our outline. Let's move this cabin over. Okay, I'm gonna explode that outline. Okay, and then fill in some lines to these layers. Come in. Okay, now let's see here, let's think. What do I wanna do ceilings with and joist space and everything? Let's do nine foot ceilings and show floor trusses. Cause I think that'll lead to our best build. Cleanness with mechanicals, we're already doing flat roof trusses on this job anyway, so that's where we're gonna start. Slab on grade. Eight inches up for top of foundation. Nine foot one and an eighth for top of plate. Um, roughly 24 inches, actually probably exactly 24 inches for um, joy space. Another three quarter inch for top of subfloor. And then we'll go, um, we'll go eight foot one an eighth for the second floor. Oh wait, before I do that, I want a copy of this balcony. And then eight foot one, an eighth. Okay, so got our second floor. Second floor is some alterations. Um, let's see here, how far back? was I gotta go back into AutoCAD and measure one thing real quick that was how, how far back that bump out sat from the front of the house 16 three and a half coolio okay now Now what? All right, now we're gonna build the roof. So I'm eight foot up there. I actually think I want this to be yet another foot up. Okay, so let's do 24 inch overhangs everywhere. And then show that that's two feet. Um, tall. Okay, and then that is gonna come out to here as well. Ooh, already starting to look like something. 12 inches for that joy space for our balcony. And then, oh, you know what? This is probably gonna need to come up another foot, which is okay. It's just gonna look cool. Okay. Then this is the roof over our primary suite.
two feet up on that as well. Okay, and then this is the roof on the rest of the house. Two feet up on that as well. Okay, so this is by far the least cheap one to build, but we're starting to see a form and a structure to it. So can you see a little bit of what, what we're seeing from that mid-journey image now? Um, all starting with those blocks and, and piecing it together. Um, kind of fun, isn't it? This is why I like my job. I'm not gonna lie, it's enjoyable. Okay, got our front porch there. Ooh, I'm digging this. Okay, so we have roughly 30 inches of that wood section there. And then roughly, let's try four feet first. This wood section here. Let's pop that mid-journey image back up. Um, maximize that one? Yeah, there we go. Um, Okay, so the, you can see the wood on the right is slightly wider than the wood on the left. So that's what I'm gonna show. I'm not gonna show that balcony wrapping the corner. Um, again, this is just ease of use for construction standpoint. Like it's gonna finish out and be a lot cleaner um, if you can keep it all simple. I mean, come out maybe eight inches with it and have it be just like a cool little detail. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe that comes out six. Actually, no, this bumps back. Oops. I'm gonna bump that back, build out those wood areas. Okay, I like that four feet corner. So I'm gonna show that as well on this side. Take both those in six inches. Okay, now let's show the column that I was talking about earlier. Hopefully this doesn't ruin it. It's gonna go all the way up. It definitely has a different feel, not gonna lie. I mean, it's probably possible to do it without the column, but it just gets a lot trickier, people. A lot trickier. Let's see here. Yeah, if both those are floating. What if we did a column just on one level? There. It's possible, I mean, yeah, you're getting really expensive roof trusses then. Um, hmm, it's fun though. It's fun to think about. But yeah, let's show it with the column all the way up. Sorry, everybody. Sorry to ruin your hopes and dreams. I'm doing the, I'm showing it with the column because you know what? Most of my clients are probably building the column because they want people I'm designing for designing more for bang for your buck than we are multi, multi million dollar projects. That's just the reality of it, right? Um, so that's what we're going to show. Okay. Now I want to show some railings, some windows and start to finish this off. Um, I really like the idea of a very light stone or brick in here. I think that could be fun. Let's get this aligned linearly and show this wood siding. We're gonna reset the color on that so it'll get back to the color we wanted. There we go, boom. Okay, and then let's start with stone. Let's see how that works. I love the um, base stone. Oh, why is that black? 
a set color. I want a really light stone, but not pink. Not green either. Sweet. Okay, and then those banks will be windows. I'm gonna import a window. Actually, I can just copy them over. And these guys. I'm just gonna copy all that window set. And here we go. Okay, those won't be at grade though. I wanna bring them up 14 inches. They'll be slightly off the floor, actually. Um, this will probably come out to meet that. Uh, now let's let's go the other way with it. I want that section wider. So these. Wait, no. Even differenter idea. Okay, so wall windows. This is going to be expensive, people. Um, there's really no way to get around that. Uh, one thing that helps slightly is some framing. Um, space in between there because then you can shorten your spans um, so that's what I'm showing then let's see here how tall those would need to be now we're getting up there All right, I'm showing a triple window. The mid-journey image showed a double. I think it's okay. You be the judge. This triple window, this does get back to cost though. So these are five feet, the big windows are five feet by six feet. So what I typically find is the biggest you can get from a normal window manufacturer. Um, come down a foot for the header space. Block that out four inches. Digging it. Thank you, Mid Journey, for the inspiration. I'm glad we got to a point where we could have something that kind of looks like a floor plan here. Four inches of that. I don't want to meet those to meet the bottom of those windows. Okay. Let's see here. Is that going to look good as those being like black trim bands or should I make them wood? Oh, I'm liking the black though. I think I'm going to keep them as black. Black trim bands going through. That's cool. Okay. So then this will be. I want black fascia here. I'm gonna come in, I'm offsetting that two inches because I want to show like a slight return. And then we're gonna show wood on the underside of that. Whoo, dang. Okay. Um, if we're playing hate it, don't hate it, this is a don't hate it for me. I'll be honest, there are times I get to this point and I'm like, ooh, I screwed some up in the form or something doesn't feel right or, you know, this is the stage where you start to really tell like, eh, I just can't send this to a client because I'm not excited about it. Um, but in this case, that is not one of those moments. If I had a client on the other end of this, I would be pumped to send this over. Hey, look, we did a robot inspired design for your house. I think it actually turned out. Okay. And let's not color that bright white. All right. Just wanted to show a little trim on that. Probably be more realistic. Again, easier to finish out. Okay. Let's get a big patio slider. 
for that sidewall. A big triple probably. Those windows will actually be these, more more than likely. Just a three foot by six foot. Oops. And then I'll probably do show them at the same height as my other guys there. Just a couple little side windows. Accenting our great room. Make that a triple to match the doors below. Hmm. What if some of this, though? is a different material, like this. And I'm gonna keep that material going around the sides. Maybe that as well. So that wood is just more pronounced and this gets a little darker. Better, worse, you be the judge. We need a nice good window set on the back of our primary two. Oops. Copying those windows over. Oh, we can do transoms on those. We got the room. Oh, yeah, I think because I did. Oh no, those will be in the joy space, I think, actually. We've got to do smaller transoms. Wow, we got like Michael Bay soundtrack going back here. Rockin'. Sweet. I'm going to delete these windows. Oh, not the wall, hopefully. Okay. I'm going to import a horizontal railing from SketchUp Library. Let's see here. That roof will probably just be black membrane roofing as well. And then let's show decking. Mm, let's leave these columns just a solid black. Okay, and the concrete. Oh, that was supposed to be concrete. Okay. Oh, I need to show a couple more windows on that side. Then we're ready to roll. I guess that could be wood though too, those columns. in wood. Mm. They disappear a little bit more in black. Okay. Horizontal bar railing. Hey, sweet. That was easy. Where is... I'm just going to show that all in black to make it easy on myself. And sometimes... I like cheat and just um, transform these to the sizes that I want. 
even though like that's not exactly what they would be in real life but it's fine nobody's gonna notice it's a quick conceptual rendering I'm not looking for perfection at these this stage this is like very first draft of the house too right so it's definitely the easiest way to get it done then I'll color those black as well. Add a couple windows and we're ready for render time. I'm liking this one. This one might be my favorite one. Which one's your favorite? If you're watching along. Okay. So this would be sink wall. Let's go shrink a little. But I'm gonna right click on this and make unique. I want to share the screen though. Make unique doesn't come up. My right click menus don't for whatever reason. Probably because it's a different screen. It's probably not whatever reason. Makes sense. And then, gotta move those in the correct axis. Gonna bump that back six inches. Oh, I need a door upstairs too. Oops. Door rotate upstairs right here. Huh. That head height looks off Maybe because it is off. That's an eight foot door. Probably need to match these windows with it, huh? Coolio. Corner, corner. Oh man, I'm so pumped for this one. I don't know. There's this thing too where um, in the creative process, it's really easy to get infatuated, especially early. Like I usually have the sleep on it rule. If I think I'm like invented something new and totally groundbreaking, just come back a day later and look at it with a really critical eye. It's, it's hard to look at it with a super critical eye in the early stages, but that's okay. Like, um, you don't really want to be super critical early, um, because that really inhibits like, part of the creative process. So, um, but yeah, it, it takes a mix. Um, well, I say all that to say, like I'm sitting here right now and I'm like, Oh, this design's awesome. Like I might come back two days later and be like, Oh, this all sucks. <laughs> So it's, it's normal. If that happens to you, it's happened to me a lot. So hang in there, keep drawing stuff, get the bad ideas out of your head. Maybe the good ones will, will get there sooner or later. Okay. There's probably another cool column here. And this probably needs to be a brick one. Let's come out four inches, go over 18. The whole wall coming up. Mm. Let's bring that out a couple more feet too. Give some space to that entryway. I think I might see this from the angle I'm looking to render too, so I want to at least throw it on there. Now this house is starting to get in the way. Let's just delete it. Don't need it anymore. Check it out. Okay. We got ourselves a modern inspired, honestly pretty kind of expensive, but cool house. And let's check the time. An hour and 10 minutes. So the discount intro, probably pretty close to 
an hour here. That was fun. I'm going to throw this on the other drawing here. Oops. I accidentally moved the picture shortcut. Okay. Oh. What's the name for this one? Um, condor, not technically a bird of prey. Eagle. I wanted to do like, well, let's do golden eagle. Let's just call it a golden. Their biggest one. Um, I want to do bald eagle, but bald eagle is such a bad name, even though it's though it's the coolest bird. Let's put this on our property. See if it matches and jives with what we got going on. Verbo property, hopefully y'all can see this. Yes, you can. I'm gonna import our golden. Oh, whoops. I had accidentally still included this house. Okay. Um, let's set that back here some I'm imagining this view is out like behind us behind the camera let's move the trees out from the middle of that house because that won't feel right and we come back in and actually put some trees back over there help frame the house and give it some perspective Oops, wrong axis. Vertically up, straight in the air. Oh, now we're in like funky town. Okay, so um, now that I have those trees ready for rendering, I'm gonna fire up Enscape, show this to you in 3D. Um, and We'll see. We'll see what it looks like. Let's stop sharing that window and start sharing a new window. Okay, so reminder, that was our mid journey image. Let's come over to Enscape and see what our Enscape image looks like. Ballpark. We're in the ballpark. Alrighty, what do you think? Would you rent this for a vacation? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know. Does it jive with our other ones on the property? I think so. I'm feeling like they all kinda look like they would hang out. <laughs> My Alexa robot is wanting to join in on the, on the live stream. Thanks a lot, Lexi. Alrighty. Thank you for watching. This concludes live stream. Just over 60 minutes, but this is my process and would be a good process to follow. Well, I don't know if it's a good process to follow or not, actually. Um, but this is what I do to get plans that look like that from something mid-journey inspired. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day.